Ladies and gentlemen, when you have, every now and then I should say, every now and then you have a pet dog who seems to all of a sudden get in his head that he is the master of the domain, the yard I guess you could call it. Now what do you do with a dog? that tends to get out of control and think that he has become the master of the domain, the master of the yard. Well, me. I roll up a newspaper, roll it up, not too tight, just to let them know. And you give them a little smack right on the nose, just a little smack. Now sometimes, sometimes that dog thinks he's still the master and he wants to bite back. So what do you do? You bite him back. This works sometimes. But every now and then there is a dog that you can smack on the nose. You can bite them back and he will continue to come at you and think that he is your master. So sometimes, sometimes you need to choke that dog out. Sometimes you have to put the dog in his place and you have to put him to sleep. Now when the dog comes to, sometimes, for the most part, that dog has learned his place. He understands who is the master of the domain, the yard. But every now and then, there is one dog that will come at you again. So what do you do? You bring in the trainer. Let's call him Braun. Now Braun, Braun's a good dude. Comes in, teaches your dog some respect, some manners. Because Braun don't take shit from nobody. So Braun puts your dog in his place for you. Now if that dog gets back up, he knows Master's in the house. And tonight, tonight, Monday Night Raw, June 19th. 2017, Braun Strowman made a huge return to Monday Night Raw, and he put the dog down. This is Pillar to Post. I am your host, Pete Wall. We're here in my dungeon, and I welcome you. Now, first, before we get anything going, I want to give a shout out to Tyler Black. He is a Patreon or a patron of my Patreon page. He is a good friend. I have been enjoying our conversations with one another. And I want to give a little shout out to my little dog, little Pug. He is a new subscriber to Pillar to Post. He is a, he is just coming up on his 10th birthday. He enjoys the show. He enjoys the live streams. And I want to also welcome all the other new subscribers to the channel because this channel seems to finally have grown and is hitting a stride, which I like to see. I want to throw it out there because a lot of the new subscribers do not know. When we hit 200, we're going to have a little draw here on Pillar to Post and there will be a Pillar to Post t-shirt for the winner of that draw. So when we get up to 200 subscribers, make sure you stay tuned for news of that draw. Also, before we get any further, I want to give a shout out to my, my sponsor. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audio, audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com backslash pillar to post. Now, they have over 200,000 titles to choose from for your Android, iPhone, Kindle, or MP3 player, or any other traveling device you might carry. And 
believe me, man, I've already taken advantage of it. You, If you can think of a book, they probably have it. They, it can be wrestling related. It can be fantasy fiction, sci-fi, romance. You name it, they have it. And you can take it wherever you need to go. Now, what does this do? Well, that link I just gave you, audibletrial.com backslash pillar to post. It will be in the description below. And every time someone uses that link to download an audio book, yes, you only get one, but every time a subscriber or a viewer takes advantage of that link, it helps this channel out. And because of the whole ad revenue bullsh BS, I'm trying to watch my language for a change, all the ad revenue BS that's been taking place where wrestling related content is put on a restricted mode, our sponsors give us the help we need whenever you use our links. So make sure you take advantage of it. I'll leave it in the description below for you and I appreciate it every time you guys use it. Now, I have to fix my Teespring store link. Um, thanks to Tyler Black, he let me know this one isn't working, so I will update it. Um, also, you can find my Facebook merchandise page, my author page, and my Facebook account itself if you want to send me a friend request and co uh, connect with me on Facebook. That will all be in the description below. If you want to check out my VidMe channel, Right now, it is basically everything I'm doing on YouTube, so it's all up to you. You want to check it out and become a follower, my VidMe link is in the description below. My Patreon page, patreon.com backslash pillar to post. If you want to help this channel out and you want to pledge anywhere from a dollar or up, that is your choice. I'm not asking, I'm not telling, I'm not demanding. It is up to you. You want to help the channel out. You want to see this channel thrive. I, I appreciate it. You can uh, pledge for as low as $1 a month. And you will get all the news and rumors Pillar to Post delivers 12 hours before everyone else. And if you pledge any higher, there are rewards for you. So that is an option you have. My email address, steeldragon1234 at hotmail.com you can send me sub stories your experiences with um, maybe a live event wrestling it can be indie it can be WWE ring of honor whatever have you you want to share that story send it my way I will read it here on pillar to post or if you want to tell your story of how you've overcome a huge obstacle in your life that has been dogging you for years and years or heartache or loss does not matter you want me to read it I will read it here on pillar to post every Thursday so that is an option those links will all be in the description below so tonight tonight Monday Night Raw I struggled I'm telling you people and I'm being completely and blunt about this completely honest and blunt about this I struggled through the first hour and a half of this of this show I really struggled I had to work so hard to stay awake and I did doze off in between now where business picked up a little bit is when I heard Samoa Joe was going to be facing Roman Reigns tonight okay I was at wide awake. I wanted to see that match. And I stayed awake throughout the rest of the match. A lot of big things happened the second half of the show. It still was not a good show. It was a terrible show for the most part. You cannot equate one, two good things happening in a three hour and 20 minute show to the rest of it being completely and utterly garbage. Right? Now, I understand the Roman Reigns intro was supposed to spark this, this fight between Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe. But by God, they need to make a decision. Are they going to put Roman Reigns completely heel or not? Because for the most part, that promo he cut at the top of the show was 
very much a heel-like promo. But yet, they turn around and they have him as a babyface, and it makes no sense. And I know they are they're 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 towing that line of saying, well, why does he have to be good or bad? Why can't he just walk in the gray? Well, you know what? From everything I've watched of wrestling since I started this pod, podcast, almost every wrestler wants to walk that gray line. And frankly, it doesn't work. It's not entertaining. Back in the day, they had a formula. It worked. Most independent companies still use that formula. You've got good versus evil. Okay? Every now and then, there is a guy that can tread that gray line. But it has to be a special breed. Not every single mf -er out there can walk that gray line and make it entertaining. The best one that ever did it was Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I don't see a Stone Cold Steve Austin on the roster today. Not a damn single one of these superstars even comes close to a Stone Cold Steve Austin. God damn it. It's retarded. So, let's kick this off. So, Reigns takes a moment to take in the mix of boos and cheers from the crowd. Now, Reigns says some may not like it and some may love it. But when it comes down to it, he cannot be beaten one on one. Very much sound like a heel. Very much. Now, Reigns goes on to list all of the superstars he has beaten, even though everyone he listed has beaten him as well. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? But let's not let facts get in the way of a good story, people, because frankly, that would just ruin things, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Because hell, Samoa Joe debuted. His debut match, he defeated the big dog in the yard. Now Rain says that the main event three wrestle uh, the main evented he re, excuse me tongue tied people. Reigns goes on to say that he main evented three WrestleManias and he beat and retired the Undertaker. Now Reigns doesn't care who walks away with the Universal Title come um, Great Balls of Fire. It doesn't matter if it's Brock Lesnar or that guy named Joe at SummerSlam. He is the number one contender, and he is going to win the title. Now, Samoa Joe power walks to the ring, and Joe says he couldn't help but notice that Reigns seems to have forgotten his name. I love Samoa Joe. He is um, just one of a kind, truly. Just one of a kind. Samoa Joe, big fan of his. Now, Reigns had to come out here and list the people he has beaten, but Joe's name isn't on that list. Joe tells Reigns to allow him to reintroduce himself. He is Samoa Joe, the number one contender and the next Universal Champion. Reigns says he never thought he would agree with Paul Heyman, but Joe will never be a Samoa Joe to Reigns. Now he will always be just Joe. So what does Joe do? He headbutts the bastard right in the face. Now, Reigns tumbles to the outside. Joe beats down Reigns on the outside. Joe rolls Reigns back into the ring and attempts to lock in the Coquina Clutch. Now, Reigns counters and hits the Superman Punch. Joe, playing it smart, rolls to the outside and backs away. Making sure what's going to happen is going to happen, but it's going to be at a later time. So that was your opening segment. A very much heel-like promo from... Um, from Roman Reigns. Now, what do I mean by he like, heel like promo? Well, overconfidence. A, a baby face will never list the people he's defeated to get to where he is. Okay, he doesn't need to. He can just go on and tell you that he has scratched and clawed and fought and bled and sweat his way up the rungs. Of success reigns tonight though told the fans he doesn't care they might not like what he has to say they may love it but when it all comes down to it 
He doesn't care what they think. Okay, that is very much heel-like a uh, promo. Now, he didn't say the last part. He didn't care what they think. But basically, that's what it came down to. He doesn't give a shit. So, why not let him be a complete heel? Okay, he's already acting it. He's already pushing that boundary. Why not just let him go full blast heel? That's all I got to say about that. It wasn't a bad opening. It was a way to bring us a match later on. A match that I think could have done a lot better at a pay-per-view. This is the second time Samoa Joe has faced Roman Reigns on Raw television. And it makes no sense to throw a big fight feel match away like that. Um, they could have done a whole lot of a different thing. You know, Joe could have gotten his revenge in the back room for getting Superman punched and taken, you know, um, taken Roman Reigns out in the locker room. Something like that. And then it builds up to a pay-per-view or the next uh, encounter between whatever. You know, just some thoughts. But I did like the fight tonight. So up next, the Hardy Boys versus Anderson and Gallows. And frankly, this match bored me to sleep. I frankly had a big, tr big, big problem staying awake. I kept on falling asleep throughout this match. Now, to be honest, I am sick as a dog. I've got the bad sweats going right now. My throat is killing me. And I haven't slept well. Now, I figured today when I went and seen my doctor, I'd, I'd get some good news and it'd perk me up and I'd feel better. Not the case. I did get some good news. I went in for surgery a few months, or uh, about, about a month back. They had to do a biopsy. They found a lump. They had to examine it. Cancer, the word cancer came up. So I've been stressing over that for the last month. I got the news today. Nothing there. Good to hear. Um, but it didn't give me that perk me, perk me up feeling. I still just feel like utter crap. And I don't know if that's playing into how I'm viewing the show tonight because I struggled really hard to stay awake through it. Now this was just like every other meeting these two have had these two teams have had so far. There wasn't really much of a big fight feel between these. Um, you know, Gallows and Anderson doing their basic things. The Hardy Boys doing their basic things. It wasn't really a, a big, big fight feel. Um, now, Matt hits the side effect for a near fall near the end of the match. Anderson and Gallows hit the boot of doom for a two count. Jeff tags himself in. Matt hits the twist of fate. Swanton bomb by Jeff for the win. Your winner's the Hardy Boys. And we all know what's going on. They will be facing um, Cesaro and Sheamus in the very near future again for those tag team titles. We know that's going to happen. So I can understand why they're racking up the wins. And I'm going to take a drink here. No, don't blame it on the beer. This is my first beer. I'm going to see if it helps me relax tonight and get some sleep. So, up next, we get a Goldust Shattered Dreams production. Goldust tells us, and Mr. DeVille, that he is ready for his close-up. Goldust formally invites our truth to the debut of his latest motion picture, Shattered Dreams. You will laugh, you will cry, and you will all, and you will never forget the name, Goldust. The golden age has returned, and I do like it. It's just taken a long time to get there. So, finally, next week, we are going to see the reinvention of gold dust. The return of the golden age. I do like that because he was a lot more interesting and a lot more devious back in the day. And if he's going to go back that route to the original, the original, the OG gold dust, I'm going to enjoy it. So we get an in-ring segment. Elias Sampson's, you know, doing his normal thing. He's going to play us a song. He's going to sing to us. He stops and he says he has to 
tune his guitar. Begins tuning it. Finn Balor's music hits. He walks to the ring. Samson gets in Balor's face, but eventually just walks away. The drifter drifted. So Finn Balor and Bo Dallas up next. Yes, Bo Dallas. We haven't seen him in a very long time, and it's good to see him back. And he started this match off on fire. I liked it. I liked the vicious tactics he went through to start this match. Sadly, he fell into the same predicament he usually does in a match. Now, as Balor is taking off his coat, Dallas attacks him. The referee asks Balor if he can continue. Balor says yes, and the referee rings the bell. Now, Dallas tosses Balor out of the ring, follows and hits a running knee to Balor's face as he is laying against the barricade. Now, Dallas throws Balor back into the ring, and Balor hits the overhead kick to stun Dallas. Balor stomps Dallas. Balor continues with a clothesline to Dallas over the top rope. Now, uh, Balor almost decapitates Dallas with the penalty kick off the apron. Uh, we get a slam to Dallas into, the, uh, into each barricade, and then a sling blade by Balor. Now, Balor hits the torpedo dropkick, followed by the double foot stomp, as you know, the coup de grace. Your winner, Finn Balor. After the whole onslaught at the beginning of the match, and then shortly thereafter, Finn Balor made a comeback, and it just was not Bo Dallas' night once again. Now, I was hoping with that viciousness that he came in at Balor with, I was really hoping for a dif different turn of events than what we would end up getting later on in the show. But that's for later. So, up next, Corey Graves takes off his headset and he ends up leaving the commentary desk. Didn't really know why. So, backstage, Kurt Angle is on the phone. Graves walks in and shakes Angle's hand. Now, Graves says it's too bad Angle didn't have a good Father's Day. Angle pulls his hand away. Graves says he got the same text as Angle. That's how he knew about that. Now, Graves says he has an idea on how to, he can handle this. Enzo and Big Cass walk into uh, Angle's office. Uh, where was I? And Angle yells at Enzo about a tweet that he sent to Conor McGregor. Now, Cass cuts Enzo off and says Angle isn't worried about the right things. Enzo says it it was the revival was... The, excuse me. Enzo says it was the revival that was responsible for the attack on him. Cass says when he found out or found Enzo's chain after he got attacked, he thought it may have been Enzo, but he knows now it was the big show. Angle promises to find out who has been attacking Enzo and Cass by the end of the night. We get another in-ring segment. Seth Rollins walks out. Now, Seth Rollins hypes up the fact that he is now on the cover of the WWE 2K18 game that's coming out very, very damn soon. I believe October 17th, 18th, something like that. Now, Rollins goes over the story of him turning on the shield and so forth. Rollins thanks the crowd for giving him a chance. Now, this isn't his cover. It's our cover, which made absolutely no sense to me. How is it our cover? You're the one gracing the cover of the 2K18 game. So, how is it our cover? Made no sense. Didn't like it at all. Now, the mistakes we make don't have to define us he goes on to say we decide who we are Rollins says he wants to make a promise to all of us Bray Wyatt's voice cuts him off and says Rollins isn't being honest Rollins claims to be his own man but he shills the corporate banner now Rollins is now conforming to what all these people want him to be Rollins can play this role but they both know he isn't that man. Rollins says Wyatt is right. Rollins says... Excuse me. Rollins isn't that man. He is the man, he goes on to say. Pulling a line from the man who calls himself the big dog. He isn't... Um, 
you know, the, you remember the whole spiel of Roman Reigns. He ends up ending it with, he's the man fucking guy. Rollins says the truth about gods is that they only exist in our minds. In Wyatt's world, he may be a god. In Rollins' world, Wyatt is a coward. Now, in Rollins' world, oh, Wyatt says he warned Rollins that anyone who takes his name in vain shall be punished. Wyatt says it's time to make a sacrifice. Now, Wyatt is here. Wyatt's music hits and he walks to the ring. Wyatt gets to ringside and the lights come on. Rollins is perched on the top rope. Wyatt looks up and Rollins dives off the top rope onto Bray Wyatt. So that was that. Nothing much. Just a whole lot of talk and then a pounce. Now we go back to the commentary desk and Graves says he just wants to take a moment to heap praise on Angle as a Raw GM. Really buttering up Angle here. There is a bigger story behind this, people. A lot bigger. You have to remember, Stephanie McMahon will be coming back very, very soon. And you have to also remember, this is a big storyline leading into Angle returning to ring action. So, stay watching this little stuff. A lot of it doesn't make sense. A lot of it could have been done a lot better, but this is what they're going with. And I can't wait for the day Kurt Angle is back in that ring because at least then we'll get some good wrestling. So during a backstage uh, interview, Samson attacks Balor. Now Samson tells Balor not to upstage him again. We get Devon Dudley running in and tells Samson to back the hell away and he calls for help. That leads us into the next match, Akira Tozawa versus TJP. Um, really, just another 205 Live match, but this time we have Titus O'Neil involving himself. He walks out to ringside and does his normal ring announcement of Tozawa and TJP. They do the match. Basically, he's going to elevate... Akira Tozawa to stardom. You get your usual match of TJP. You get your usual match of Tozawa. Wasn't that great. Didn't excite me at all. Not going to go into the match. Now after the match however. Titus says his usual bullshit. Neville tells Titus to watch his tongue. Neville calls Titus a peasant. And tells Tozawa to tread carefully. If Tozawa isn't careful, he won't be able to bend a knee. He will get annihilated. Titus says that Neville is going to end up feeling the power of Tozawa. My God, how lame are you, Titus O'Neil? You get your ass back to catering where um, Curtis Axel's been stuffing his goddamn face along with Bo Dallas and whoever the hell is else back there that you guys are all chowing down with, return there because, frankly, you on my television makes no sense at all. And then we get our R-Truth segment, basically just stealing the whole Goldust theme of Shattered Dreams production, and he does his usual thing and says that Goldie is going to get got. So backstage, Curtis Axel's trying to cheer up Bo Dallas. The Miz walks in and tells them they are both, uh, they are both bit players. Now on the set of the Marine Five, they were badasses. Miz offers Dallas and Axel the chance to be his entourage. Really? Now Miz walks away and tells them to think about it. They mustn't have thought too far ahead for their futures. Give me a break. You got two talented superstars. You have Mr. Perfect's son, Curtis Axel. And then you have Bo Dallas, part of the Rotunda family, the brother of Bray Wyatt. And if you just took in the glimpse of what he did to Finn Balor at the beginning of their match, you know the talent that lies in this man. And they have to play beneath their talents and cater to a guy like The Miz. And then even bothering mention Marine 5. 
I tried watching Marine 5, people. I didn't make it 10 minutes into that damn movie. That's how god-awful and boring it was. The camera angles, the camera shots, totally garbage. The acting was... Wow. You know what? I have seen pornos that were done better than what Marine 5 gave the people. Don't bring up Marine 5 again, please. God damn it, Miz. You know? And of course, we get Miz TV again tonight, too. That That's going to follow suit. Kurt Angle is seen talking to the revival backstage. Nothing is heard. Move along. Now, backstage, Charlie asks Joe if he is prepared for his match against Roman Reigns. Joe says she is asking the wrong questions. She should be asking Reigns how he is going to deal with a guy named Joe. Joe says tonight he's going to teach Reigns his name. And I think he did. I really do. So up next is your Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns match. A very back and forth match. And I love the competition side of this match. You've seen the striking force and the abilities of both men. Um, yes, Roman Reigns relied on his usual five to six moves that he usually does. Samoa Joe played him up and made Roman Reigns look the better for it. This match was so back and forth, so in your face. I did enjoy it. Okay. Um, now, I am sure that this match would have been even better if it would have been at a pay-per-view because I could have seen them putting a lot more hard work into it. But for a Monday Night Raw, this is what we should be seeing. Good matches like this, competitive matches. I don't have a problem with this match whatsoever. I just think that they're giving it away a little bit too soon. And both men, I was worried. What's going to happen? Are they going to end up making Samoa Joe look weak going into Great Balls of Fire to face Brock Lesnar? Or are they going to make Roman Reigns look weak? So, big surprise coming up here. So, Joe forces Reigns into the corner right at the beginning of the match. And Joe gives Reigns a clean break. Reigns and Joe trade shoulder blocks. Neither man can knock the other down. Now, Joe mushes Reigns in the face. Basically, face palms him. Reigns uppercuts Joe. Joe knees Reigns in the gut, and Joe hits the ropes, but Reigns floors him with a shoulder block. Joe rolls to the outside to collect himself, and Reigns tries to lock up with Joe, but Joe elbows him in the face. Reigns and Joe trade strikes back and forth. Joe whips Reigns into the corner. Joe hits his running back elbow, falling in Zagiri combo in the corner, and Joe attempts to lock in the Coquina clutch. This time, Reigns rolls to the outside to get a little breather and a little distance between his opponent. Now, Reigns gets back in the ring. Joe grabs Reigns and headbutts him repeatedly. Now, as Reigns is laid out on the mat, Joe yells at Reigns, What's my name? I did love it. Okay? I don't know why, but Samoa Joe looking down on Roman Reigns and yelling at him, What's my name? Just blatantly tells Roman Reigns, you're my bitch. Scream my name. That's all I'm going to say. Reigns surprises Joe with a Samoan drop that looked very terrible, I should add. You can see Joe had to leap up quite a bit for Reigns to actually get it to completion. Now, Joel rolls to the apron and Reigns is about to hit the drive-by, but Joe moves out of the way. Um, Joe picks up Reigns and slams him, him back first into the ring post. As Reigns rides in pain on the floor, Joe hits a running senton on the floor. And I'm going to grab a drink before I move on. Now after the break, Joe lands a Muda elbow for a two count. Joe mounts Reigns and lands a flurry of punches to Reigns' head. Now Joe locks in a rear chin lock. And he tries another senton, but Reigns moves out of the way. Now Joe misses a corner splash, allowing Reigns to land a few clotheslines and a big boot for a near fall. 
We get multiple uh, corner clotheslines by Reigns, and Joe stumbles out of the corner when Reigns tries to clothesline him again. Now Reigns calls for the Superman punch. Joe retreats to the outside, once again avoiding a bad, bad move. The, Samo uh, the Superman punch. Now, not a bad move in MMA. just doesn't look right here in WWE. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because Reigns is using it. Who knows? Uh, Reigns manages to hit the drive-by on the outside, and Reigns m then misses the Superman punch. Joe hits an inverted atomic drop, then a big boot, followed by a running senton. Reigns kicks out again, and Joe sets up the Uranagi, but Joe counters. I mean, Reigns counters and hits the Superman punch. Joe kicks out. Reigns tries the spear, but Joe kicks Reigns in the head. Now, Joe completely destroys Reigns with a Uranagi, this time succeeding. Reigns will not stay down, however. Somehow manages to kick out, and Joe tries to lock in the Coquina Clutch. Reigns backs uh, Joe into the corner to break the hold, and hits a spear. Joe gets to his feet on the ropes uh, to stop the three count. Now, Joe is almost counted out. Reigns lo looks to the setting up another spear. An ambulance all of a sudden appears on the Tron. Now it's just backing up. You hear the beep, beep, beep of the backup uh, lights. It stops. We hear the roar. And out comes Braun Strowman. The return of the monster among men has come back. Now this, as you might know or surmise, causes Roman Reigns to be distracted. Joe slaps on the Coquina Clutch. Knox Reigns out. Your winner, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe was smart here. He made sure he got out of Dodge. Now Braun Strowman hits the ring and tells Reigns that he must have forgotten that Strowman isn't finished with him yet. Strowman picks up Reigns and drops him with that reverse choke slam. Strowman challenges Reigns to an ambulance match. At Great Balls of Fire. And there you have your pay-per-view match at Great Balls of Fire. An ambulance match between the monster among men. Braun Strowman. Going one-on-one -on -one with the self-appointed Superman of WWE. Roman Reigns. I do like it. You know, there is something when a big man looks down at a smaller man and says... You must have forgotten who I am. And I'm not finished with you yet. Beautifully done. Best words spoken tonight. Out of everything that went down. Best words spoken. I'm not finished with you. Up next we get another pathetic attempt at Miz having a career here on Monday Night Raw. Miz TV. And it's all about apologizing to his wife, Maurice. That is his special guest. Now, once again, you know, he's almost made up with his wife. Dean Ambrose's music hits. Miz looks to the ramp. Out comes Dean Ambrose. He comes down to the ring. And once again manages to upset Maurice. Maurice storms off because Miz pulls him, her in front of him. She splashes her own uh, champagne in her face. She storms off. Now, Miz is against the ropes. It looked almost identical to last week. Uh, he's against the ropes, screaming for Maurice, apologizing. He turns around, rushes at Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose hooks, hooks in Dirty Deeds. Miz scurries out underneath the bottom turn, uh, ropes. And guess who ends up being the two teddy bears in the ring? Of course, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. I mean, by God, you guys aren't done demeaning yourselves yet. So they put the beats on Dean Ambrose. Basically, The Miz exacting his revenge for the last couple of weeks or a few weeks where he's been antagonized by Dean Ambrose. Tonight, he got his revenge. There you go, another useless segment of Miz TV and another... Useless night where 
the Intercontinental Champion does absolutely nothing to elevate his title. There you go. Backstage was Kurt Angle seen talking to the Big Show. So up next we got the Raw Tag Team Champions Cesaro and Sheamus versus Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews. Complete garbage match. Don't want to review it at all. I think giving it a garbage match review is reviewing it enough for me. Completely garbage. I'm not. I'm not kidding. Just really, what was the point? Okay, yeah, you introduced another tag team, but frankly, Titus O'Neil as anyone's partner at this point makes no sense, okay? He might be talented. I don't know. He just doesn't fit that ring. You know, I'm looking at him. Apollo Crews is close enough. All's, all Titus O'Neil has to do, reach out. Just stretch his arm completely out straight. Bang, tag made. No, you know what he does? He doesn't bend his elbow. So he can't reach it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I couldn't reach you. You all know who won. Okay? Sheamus and Cesaro aren't going to lose to Apollo Crews and Titus. I love my catering job, O'Neal. Up next is Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks. Another pointless, stupid match. But we end up getting all of our women involved here on Raw in one match. Yes, it is a uh, just a singles match. Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks, but we see all the women of Raw in this match. Alexa Bliss comes out f to join the commentary crew. During her time there, we end up getting Emma come out to confront her. She runs down, chases her to the ring, and it all blows up. Now, I do want to make something uh, clear here. Bailey comes in at the end of this. And basically just takes everyone out. Okay? Emma gets taken out. Alexa Bliss takes out. She jumps at Nia Jax. And I'm wondering, where was this fire at the last pay-per-view? In the kendo stick on a pole match. Where was your fire then? Did you and Corey Graves have the, the secret meeting in the broom closet before you came out? I don't know. But something crawled up in you. You had a little bit of fire. It would have been nice to see that at the pay-per-view. But no, we get it on Monday Night Raw where it doesn't make any sense. So, no one won. It was thrown out. Nothing happened. You got Dana Brooke, J Mickey James, um, Nia Jax, Sasha Banks, Bailey, uh, Emma, and... I don't know. I think that was it. All in the ring at once. And it looked like garbage. Now to finally close the show. This this show went 20 minutes over the time limit. Usually it's 3 hours. It went to 11.20 tonight. Kurt Angle is down in the ring. He calls out Enzo and Big Cass. Enzo and Big Cass finally get down in the ring. They have to do their normal shit going down to the ring. Angle says he, he has been talking to suspects all night long. He spent time to talk to a tag team and the big show. All night long, give me a damn break, Kurt Angle. Angle calls for the revival to come to the ring as well as the big show. Now Cass stares daggers at show as he walks to the ring. Angle says someone with a strong punch hit Cass from behind. Or so, big Cass was saved. Angle asks Sho if it was him. Now Sho calls both Enzo and Cass soft. Sho says if Angle feels that way, maybe he shouldn't be on Angle's show anymore. This kind of sounds like, um, okay, we got John Cena as a free agent. So now is Big Show being placed on SmackDown? I don't know. Angle starts to speak to the Revival. Dawson says that they aren't trying to win popularity contests. But they didn't do this. Angle says the Revival have solid alibis. So what do you know? Corey Graves stands up from the commentary table and says that Cass said that he had a lump on the side of his head the size of a baseball. Now Grave did some dig uh, Graves did some digging and the medical staff never actually attended Cass. Cass says it wasn't the WWE medical team, it was the EMTs. Graves says he knows what happened to Enzo last week. Graves 
asked the truck to roll the security footage. So in the footage, Cass lays down the axe uh, as if he has been attacked, sets up the scene, and Graves says no one attacked Cass, and Cass attacked Enzo. Cass says, damn straight he did it. Cass says he wa has wanted to slap the hell out of Enzo for a long time. Goes on to say he felt bad for Enzo because no one in the back likes him. Now Cass wanted to watch Enzo suffer after all the years of putting up with en him. Excuse me, of putting up with him. Cass goes on to blame Enzo for essentially everything that is wrong in his life. And Cass says Enzo's mouth writes checks that his mouth can't cash. Actually, he says his mouth makes checks. His ass can't cash. Now, Cass says they are through. Cass boots Enzo in the face and says, you can't teach that. Now, Cass leaves his angle, is checking on Enzo, and that is the closing of Raw tonight. Now, as you know, it's been rumored for a long time, the breakup of Enzo Amore and Big Cass. And you know what? I do have to say I kind of like it. Okay? Their tag team was slated for greatness when they debuted on Raw. And they were met with adversity straight through. They were always held back. They never reached their full potential. It wasn't their fault. It was just something was always shinier in Vince McMahon's eyes. Okay? It was decided they were going to get a title shot. What happened? Vince McMahon took that away. Someone else got the shot instead. Thank you very much, sweetheart. I do appreciate the coffee. My throat is killing me. I didn't know you had that. Oh. Um, so, we've got Big Cass finally going solo. I do like that. He's a big man. The, the I always thought the tag team between him and Enzo looked off. Enzo, we all know, isn't the best wrestler. He isn't, you know... He, he's a good talker. I would have rather have seen Enzo Amore being Big Cass's manager. You know, because that is the manager's job. You know, writing checks so that way his client can cash him. And that would have been a better dynamic than having Enzo and Cass as a tag team. So I kind of like this. Where does Enzo go from here? Oh, there's going to be a short-lived feud because we know Big Cass is going to destroy Enzo Enzo's probably going to end up either on, uh, let's see, 205 Live, maybe try and bring and elevate 205 Live to make it more interesting. So that was tonight's Raw review. Raw's report here on Pillar to Post. I appreciate everyone that has recently subscribed to uh, the channel. You all know when I do a live stream, I chat it up with you guys while I'm playing. Or while I'm commentating, it doesn't matter what I'm doing on my live streams. You guys have a question, I'm always going to be there to answer. You guys have a comment, I'm always going to return that comment. Okay? Never worry about it. As long as we keep it clean, I'm all good with it, folks. So, tomorrow. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Will be the fantasy booking of SmackDown. I will also be doing commentating. I hope to hell my throat's feeling better tomorrow. I'm done with these sweats. I, God damn, I'm tired of it. And I'm hoping to get a good night's sleep. That's what I'm looking forward to tonight. Tomorrow, fantasy booking a SmackDown. SmackDown's my show. Okay? And we are going to kick it up a notch. We're going to finally crown and finish our tag team tournament. We're going to crown our first tag team champions. And we're going to have an intercontinental title bout. As well as, I believe, finish up the women's uh, championship tournament as well. I think that's what we're doing. I'll have to check my notes out. But either way, big things going down. Smackdown Fantasy Booking live stream at 4 p.m. with the PS4. Thank you very much for joining me. It's been a blast as always. I appreciate all your support here on Pillar to Post. And eventually I will get into talking with all of yous as much as I can, or most use for the most part. Have a good night, all. See you tomorrow.